All right, everybody, good afternoon. The first of the conference championship games is just getting ready to kick off here in a little bit. But before we get there, I want to talk about another element of the Seahawks outgoing free agents that should be at least touched on for a little bit um, and then probably moved on from pretty quickly because I don't see this as a realistic um, avenue for the Seahawks to explore. But we got to talk about it. We got to talk about the franchise tag. So... The franchise tag basically allows teams to have a little bit of leverage over their players when they're about to negotiate a big contract. So, basically, if the Seahawks have a big-time player that they really want to keep, and that player is not playing ball in the way that they want in negotiations for his contract, then you use a franchise tag, and that tag basically becomes a one year fully guaranteed deal the average of the i think top five players at the position in terms of pay and the player cannot decline said tag um, if they don't want to get tagged if they don't want to play on the tag they can sit out and lose a lot of money and um, just have things roll over into next year and more realistically what they will do is enter the negotiations with a new understanding of what they need to do in order to uh actually have a productive conversation because now the team has just said look we're not going to just let you go here you're you're um we're going to find a way to make a deal that makes sense for both of us or else you're just going to be stuck with this tag that is going to derail your career so players don't like the tag because it's a one-year deal and teams don't like the tag because it puts the entire cap hit into the current season which is death especially for a position like quarterback. So understand that neither team really likes to use the tag. Neither side likes to use the tag. However, teams are willing to do it to kind of um, weaken the position of the player just a little bit here and get them to come to the table in a little more good faith because they realize, wait a minute, I don't hold all the cards here. So that that's the first part of it. If a team uses the franchise tag... They're probably not looking to actually have that tag carry over into the season. They're probably looking to take the tag off after they come to some multi-year agreement. However, that still qualifies as utilizing the tag. Also, you can tag a player and then trade him to another team. That happens occasionally. So if we have a player that we know is valuable that either we don't want to bring back or we're not willing to pay the amount of money it's going to take to bring them back, you can tag them and get something for them when you trade them to another team. So, what are the options for the Seahawks? Well, we don't have a quarterback that is eligible for the franchise tag except for Drew Locke, and obviously Drew Locke is not worth $36 million. Um, the next biggest tag is defensive end, and I don't know if Leonard Williams is officially regarded as a defensive end or a defensive tackle. Defensive end is 23 3 million defensive tackle is 19 point and call it 19 and three quarters million so there is a difference there however and this is kind of the big thing leonard williams is not really a tag target because he was tagged twice previously in his career and my understanding is that if you as a player have been tagged twice in your career the third time will come with massive additional charges to the team because they don't want one player to get screwed over every single year the way that uh, some players in the old days would get that. Like, I think Walter Jones got tagged three times in his career. So basically it was just a way for um, teams to really, really make it hard for a player to not eventually agree to an extension that is favorable to the team. They wanted to reduce that. So my understanding is that there would be an additional, like, 20% charge on a tag with Leonard Williams, so either way, that's not going to work. Either way, it's too much money. Like, like this would be a one-year, what, if it's 20%, let's say that it's 20%, $24 million for that one year, there's no way Leonard Williams is going to want more than 20, uh, or even at $24 million uh, a year on an extension. Even if he's at his ultimate level of avarice, I don't think he's going to be looking for an extension that pays him $24 million a year. 
So that doesn't really work. And maybe you could use it as leverage, but not be not with that um, third tag element coming into play here. So I don't believe using the tag on Leonard Williams is a possibility. So defensive end, defensive tackle doesn't really matter. Uh, linebacker, however, we have an interesting conversation here with Jordan Brooks. Could Jordan Brooks be worth giving the franchise tag, or at least utilizing it on him temporarily? That's a $22 million cap hit, and again, it's all up front, all that one year, so that's not great. That's a lot of money. Like, in my scenario where I was able to get us to $70 million in cap, that's still not comfortable at all for one player. But could there be leverage to be gained? I think so. I mean, again, elite linebackers, and don't get me wrong, I am not one of these people at all, but there are people out there who think he's elite. I see them all over the place. I, I don't agree with them. I know there are people out there who think Jordan Brooks is like a top five linebacker. Um, it, it's an interesting combination of people who are super, super deep into analytics and people who only look at tackle numbers. It, it's kind of like a IQ bell curve where you have the uh, um, the uh, really uh, simplistic people on the left side and the really, really um, overindulgent people on the right side. And then you have the people in the center that are like, Jordan Brooks isn't that good. And it's like the people on the left and the people on the right are the people who think that Jordan Brooks is great. I, I don't know what to make of that. That's a very weird phenomenon, I think. But uh, I know that there's a wide range of opinions on how good Jordan Brooks is. And there are definitely some people out there who would uh, say that, yeah, Jordan Brooks is worth not far off from $22 million a year, 21.9. And, again, you can tag him and then use it as leverage for an extension. You can also tag him and then trade him. I do think there would be a trade market out there for Jordan Brooks. He's young still. He's only 26 years old. He's phenomenally talented. Um, he brings a lot of positive things to the table. And he did show real improvement in coverage in 2023. So if you don't want to keep him around long term, if you just don't think that makes sense, then um, you, I, I think the franchise tag could be busted out for Brooks. Um, I do think it would only be used for leverage, though. There's no way we're bringing Brooks back on a $22 million one-year deal fully guaranteed. That doesn't make sense, and I'm sure he doesn't like it either. Um, offensive line, the only guy that we could even consider it is, uh, Daryl, uh, I'm sorry, Damian Lewis. And unfortunately, the franchise tag makes no distinction for tackles and guards and centers. Everybody just falls under the envelope of, uh, umbrella rather, of offensive line. So that's 21 and three quarters million. There's no way that we're giving Damian Lewis 21 and three quarters million for one year. He might not even be worth that over a three-year contract, honestly, the way he played last year. So that's not happening. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, wide receiver, no wide receivers that we can really tag. Defensive tackle, again, even if um, Leonard Williams qualifies, it's still not going to work because it's his third tag. Cornerback, um, we're certainly not tagging Mike Jackson for over 18 mil a year. Safety, there's no safety we can tag. Running back. We're not giving DJ Dallas 12.4. Tight end, um, if we end up wanting to keep Noah Fant, then that's actually a little bit interesting because I do think that if Noah Fant had produced over the last two years the way he produced in Denver, I do think that he would probably be looking at something like $12 million a year on a multi-year deal. So the tag in that case would be interesting. And if you're willing to accept that his production was reduced the last two years because of his situation... I, I still wouldn't do it, of course. It's $12 million for a guy who really just didn't do that much until really, I almost kind of feel like the, the Dallas game was the first game I saw Noah Fant really like show up in a big way. But it is an interesting weapon to use if you want to keep him around. I, if, he, if his price ends up being lower than I'm expecting then maybe, maybe you do use the tag on him just as some, some kind of like a leverage play. But I don't think you would use it in terms of like, we're actually going to have Noah Fant on a $12.4 million contract next year. And then special teams, uh, we don't have any special teams eligible players with tags. We don't have any kickers or punters coming available. So that's really it. So there are some options here. We could use it on Jordan Brooks and we could use it on Noah Fant. 
I think that in both cases, we would probably be doing it for a trade or leverage on an extension, of course. I don't think there is any scenario where we tag them and then have them play on the tag. But it is a valuable weapon, and sometimes you have to pull it out. We haven't had to pull it out in what feels like a little while. Don't be shocked if we do. But um, can't imagine any of these tags actually hitting our cap in 2024. So that's good. Trust me, not a single team out there actually wants to deal with a franchise tag on their cap. That is crippling. That is crushing. That hurts, unless it's a running back, maybe, a really good running back because of uh, what running back contracts have been lately, but we don't have one of those. All right, see you guys later, Go Hawks, and uh, maybe another video later today based on what happens in these games. Have fun watching, and yep, Go Hawks.